Last week, I launched a video in which I explained why I am standing for the leadership of UKIP and how I want to democratise UKIP by transferring policy-making powers from a small bureaucratic elite meeting behind closed doors in London to the entire UKIP membership throughout the whole country and to empower members in Northern Ireland, Scotland and remote parts of England and Wales to have just as much say in what future direction the party takes as those who are at the party's operational centre in London. But a lot of people have said, John, we like your ideas, but who are you and why have we never heard of you before? So firstly, why have few people outside Wales ever heard of me? The simple answer is that I've been far happier to serve from behind the scenes, assisting others that I trusted had genuine reasons for being willing to be in the public eye. For instance, when I was standing as a candidate in the last general election in South Wales, I ran a poll in my constituency, and when I discovered that it was unwinnable, I quietly moved my team across country to try to help other candidates win, that I was confident had a better chance than me. I also financed and produced UKIP's national party political broadcasts. So what has changed? If I've been happy to support rather than to run, why am I standing now? The fact is that while I think it's very likely that some of the other candidates are talented people, I am convinced that they are all about to waste a once in a political party's lifetime opportunity by having far lower ambitions for the party's future than those that I have. UKIP is in danger of becoming too respectable, too acceptable to the political class, at a time when we should be refusing to fit into the Westminster mould and instead be forging our own path. Nigel Farage has proven that if you persistently endure pursuing what you believe in against the odds, yes, you'll endure massive opposition and even ridicule, but in the end, you will prevail. He who dares wins, and we need to dare to continue to be different. My ideas will be hated by the Westminster bubble. While there are exceptions, on the whole, we're talking about a clique of people who have manoeuvred themselves into positions of power and who think they can now tell us what to do, how to live and even what to say and think. They're certainly not going to like it when they see a major political party taking the historic step of allowing their members to determine their future. And frankly, there are many senior people in UKIP who may not like it either, who aren't going to want to relinquish control to the mere members. Why? Because while we all know that democracy in principle is a fine thing, Whatever they may say in public, the overwhelming majority of our political class simply don't trust the people to know what is best for themselves. It's almost like they have forgotten that the entirety of a politician's remit is the mandate and nothing more that they receive from the people who elect them and pay their salaries. And what are they elected to do? They're elected to represent us. So if we can find a more effective system whereby we, the people, let them know what we want them to do for us, then logically, surely they'd be bound to implement such a system. You'd think so, wouldn't you? I've been reflecting on the feasibility of such a system for the last two years, ever since I was shocked to see that our own thoroughly well-meaning NEC was formulating policies at the end of a long day in London when everyone was itching to get home that were frankly unworkable. I intend no disrespect to them, but why did most of us decide to join UKIP? Speaking for those activists I've worked with, we all have this in common. It's because we have far more trust in the innate good sense of the ordinary British people to know what is best for our nation than in a small group of elites that make little effort to engage with us and canvas our view. In the absence of Nigel continuing to lead us, frankly, I do not believe that there is any other candidate in this leadership contest that is sincerely committed to this vision, that both has the necessary skills and also genuinely wants to implement the kind of reforms that I propose, and who would not merely pay lip service to the concept because he or she perceived that this idea was massively popular with our membership, but who would fight relentlessly to ensure that UKIP is always guided by our members and not by a potentially vacillating future leadership. A leadership who I fear would unfortunately very often be media-led rather than people-led. UKIP. UKIP! UKIP! Wow!
Get us! Get us! Yeah, Juno, Juno, I'm contesting the leadership of UK. You? Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. I thought we recognised this man. Yeah, it's good to meet you. Your new candidate for UKIP? That's right, yes. I got yeah. it. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you so much for starring in my film. Yeah, yeah. Are you serious, UKIP? No, absolutely serious. I'm therefore standing because I'm confident that I'm the only candidate that implicitly trusts the membership and who is willing to represent you, the members, rather than asking you to conform yourselves into whatever image a future party leader may decide to mould the party into. I also believe that I'm the only candidate that has a workable plan to transform our party into a mass membership movement that will equip us to gain substantial representation in Parliament in 2020. If you want to know how I intend to do this, please visit my website in a few days' time.